What's up you guys? This is Nicole Glass out here on a beautiful sunny day and here to talk to you about cell phone photography on Shutterstock. So I often get the question, can I upload photos that I take with my smartphone to Shutterstock? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can, as long as you meet the technical requirements. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a few different tips to make your cell phone photos stand out. And then I'm gonna walk around my neighborhood a little bit with my smartphone, and I'm gonna take those photos and upload them to Shutterstock. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to link to the technical requirements in the description below, but basically to sum it up, your photos have to be at least four megapixels in size. Most of the cell phones that have been released in the past couple of years do really well, and the photos that you take with those types of phones, you can actually upload to Shutterstock. Getting photos accepted is a lot easier than actually having photos that sell. And having them accepted by Shutterstock doesn't necessarily mean that anyone will ever buy them. Now, before you start uploading anything, go to Shutterstock.com, type in a few keywords of images that you might be taking or that you already have, and ask yourself, can your cell phone photos compete with the images that you see in the search results? There are already a lot of really talented photographers on Shutterstock, and a lot of them are using amazing equipment. So in order to compete and find success on the platform, you need to find unsaturated topics that you can photograph where there's not too much competition and where your cell phone photos will have some value. So there's a few different things that you can do to make your cell phone photos stand out. Number one, try to shoot in broad daylight. And if you're inside, look for the best lighting in the room. As we all know, cell phones do a lot better in well-lit environments. And in dark rooms, you might get really grainy footage. And even if that footage gets accepted on Shutterstock, chances are a buyer is not gonna want to purchase grainy footage. So you always have to ask yourself, would you pay money for this photo? And if the answer is yes, then it's probably a worthy photo. Number two, edit all of your photos before uploading them. Don't apply any sorts of crazy filters or upload unrealistic editors. Don't run an Instagram filter over them and then try to upload them afterwards. Don't do that. Just do a few simple edits that will make the colors pop. Usually I'll take all of my photos, put them on my computer and edit them on Lightroom. But I know some people like to use apps on their phone. There's actually a Lightroom app and that's also an option. Number three, try not to use the zoom in your cell phone. It's a lot better to manually move yourself and try to get closer to your subject just so you can maintain that quality because sometimes if you're zooming in and out on a cell phone, it'll actually reduce the quality of the photos a little bit. Number four, don't be afraid of editorial content. If you're outside, you're on the street somewhere and you see something crazy happening, pull out your phone and take some photos because chances are you might have just stumbled across something that has some sort of news value to somebody. This, for example, can happen if you're witnessing some sort of crazy weather event. Like I found myself in a tropical storm once when I was traveling, I took a couple of photos and I uploaded them to Shutterstock. And those photos of my tropical storm, which was actually like borderlining a hurricane, got downloaded pretty often during hurricane season. So if you find yourself in the middle of a hailstorm or something of that nature, like take out your phone because you're in the right place at the right time and you've got something valuable to photograph. If you're shooting primarily with a phone, I actually think it's a little bit better to focus on editorial content. Of course, you can shoot commercial and editorial content with your phone, but I think you actually have a better chance of doing well if you focus on editorial content and cover things that are not covered on Shutterstock already. There are a lot of great photographers with great equipment that have already taken photos of beautiful models and things like that. But the benefit of having the phone is that you're often gonna find yourself in situations where you have it with you at all times where you probably wouldn't have your camera. Those unexpected events, and those unexpected events is what you can photograph. Now, if you wanna upload videos with your phone, there are also a few things that you have to keep in mind. One, a lot of smartphones these days do have the capability to record in 4K, but something that you might not know is that the default settings of your phone might not actually be set to 4K. When I checked what my iPhone was recording in, it was actually recording in 1080p. I had to go into my settings and change them to 4K so that I could get 4K footage 
with my iPhone. So double check to see what your settings are on. And two, it's a good idea to invest in a smartphone gimbal so that if you are recording videos on your phone, you're gonna get some really nice smooth footage. You can also have like a tripod, but you know, a gimbal is great for those movement shots. And gimbals for phones are really not expensive. Personally, I use a Zion Tech Smooth Q gimbal for my smartphone. And I believe right now it's just under $100, which is a really good deal because it used to cost a lot more. So I'll link to that in the description below if anyone is interested in taking a look. I'll also link to a few other accessories that you can add to your smartphone. Most of these are super cheap, which will improve your photos and videos. All right, so now I'm going to walk around my neighborhood a little bit and just take a couple of photos that I am then going to upload to Shutterstock. And these photos I'm taking only with my phone, no camera. All right, so I am back. These are a few of the photos that I just took with my iPhone 7 with a minor edit that makes the colors look a little bit more vibrant. I'll often bring out the blues and the greens just to make it pop a little bit. Most of these are editorial photos because I live in a really urban area and I don't have a model or anything like that. So the best I can do with the location that I'm in right now is take some editorial photos. As you can see, I took photos of local businesses in the area, famous buildings, and other urban landmarks that I suspect people are searching for when they type in the name of my city. And right now I'm in a park near the urban area and this is the perfect place to take saturated photos, but I don't wanna do that. So I'm not actually gonna take photos of squirrels today as much as I love squirrels. And here are a few other photos that I've taken with my iPhone 7 not today, but on a different day. And I'm actually just gonna upload those as well, just to see what happens. So I'll report back to you in a future video, just to let you know how my cell phone photos are doing on Shutterstock compared to the photos that I take with my Canon 5D Mark IV. Definitely subscribe to my channel to get notified when I release that video. And also make sure to check out my description below because like I said, I'm listing a couple of accessories that'll really help you spice up your iPhone photography or your cell phone photography, as well as the equipment that I personally use to shoot most of the things that I photograph. So enjoy the rest of your day, happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next video.